Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to welcome to services. Uh, please pray with me. Oh dear Heavenly Father, your people come together. No matter what. That's what faith is all about. We find a way to come together and to do your commands. Lord, you never gave us specifics. You just said to do it. You told us it's up to us to figure out a way. Lord, thank you for being our God, and thank you for watching over us as we as we come together in these new ways to worship you. Because that is the point of worship. It's between you and us personally. How we do it, well, we'll work on that, and I know you'll bless us. Lord, thank you for having this church and this chance to come and worship you. And we just pray this all in your, your Holy Son's name. Amen. Amen. We open this morning in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. And the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Take this moment, as I say every week, to just give it to him. To open your heart and just say, Lord, I need you. Please come. Ah, oh, please join me. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, whose mercy has given his Son to die for us, and for his sake forgives us all our sin, as a call and ordained minister for the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sin, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. You're forgiven. It's, it's who we are and what God does if we believe in him. So please, with that joy in your heart, let us just share that peace. Share that peace very casually and distance. So the peace of the Lord be with you all. Also with you. Thank you. Uh, doesn't take very long this way. <laughs> <laughs> I almost had to walk down and I gotta come back again. We will. We will continue our service with our opening hymn. Praise to the Lord Almighty. Let us pray the prayer of the day. Heavenly Father, we come together today to worship you through our song and praise. Grant us the gift of your peace. Help us live our lives in hope and joy, knowing we are yours through the blood of your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. We'll have our first reading. Taking the liberty of removing the mask while I read, since I'm a good distance from everyone. Our first reading is from Acts chapter 17, verses 16 through 31. While Paul was waiting for them in Athens, he was greatly distressed to see that the city was full of idols. So he reasoned in the synagogue with both Jews and God-fearing Greeks, as well as in the marketplace, day by day with those who happened to be there. A, gr a group of Epicurean and Stoic philosophers began to debate with him. Some of them asked, what is this blabber trying to, babbler trying to say? Others remarked, he seems to be advocating foreign gods. 
They said this because Paul was preaching the good news about Jesus and the resurrection. Then they took him and brought him to a meeting of the Arpegus, where they said to him, May we know what this new teaching is that you are presenting? You are bringing some strange ideas to our ears, and we would like to know what they mean. All the Athenians and the foreigners who lived there spent their time doing nothing but talking about and listening to the latest ideas. Paul then stood up in the meeting of the Arpegius and said, People of Athens, I see that in every way you are very religious. For as I walked around and looked carefully at your objects of worship, I even found an altar with this inscription, to an unknown God. So you are ignorant of the very thing you worship, and this is what I am going to proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it is the Lord of heaven and earth and does not live in temples built by human hands. And he is not served by human hands as if he needed anything. Rather, he himself gives everyone life and breath and everything else. From one man he made all the nations that they should inhabit the world, the whole world. And he marked out their appointed times in history and the boundaries of their lands. God did this so that they would seek him and perhaps reach out for him and find him, though he is not far from any one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being. As some of your own poets have said, we are his offspring. Therefore, since we are God's offspring, we should not think that the divine being is like gold or silver or stone, an image made by human design and skill. In the past, God overlooked such ignorance, but now he commands all people everywhere to repent. For he has set a day when he will judge the world with justice by the man he has appointed. He has given proof of this to everyone by raising him from the dead. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm is Psalm 66, verses 8 through 20. And since we're starting on an even verse today, I will read the even verses, and you will read the odd. <laughs> praise our God, all peoples. Let the sound of his praise be heard. He has preserved our lives and kept our feet from slipping. For you, God, tested us. You refined us like silver. You brought us into prison and ordered us on our backs. You let people ride over our heads. We went through fire and water, but you brought us to a place of abundance. I will come to your temple with our offerings, and fulfill all my vows to you. Vows my lips promised and my mouth spoke when I was in trouble. I will sacrifice fat animals to you and offering rams. I will offer bulls and goats. Come and hear, all you who fear God. Let me tell you what he has done for me. I cried out to him with my mouth. His praise was on my tongue. If I had cherished sin in my heart, the Lord would not have listened. But God has surely listened and has heard my prayer. Praise be to God, who has not rejected my prayer, or withheld his love from me. Praise to God. Praise. The second reading is from 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 13 through 22. Who is going to harm you if you are eager to do good? But even if you should suffer for what is right, you are blessed. Do not fear their threats. Do not be frightened. But in your hearts, revere Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for hope that you have. But do this with gentleness and respect, keeping a clear conscience so that those who speak maliciously against your good behavior in Christ may be ashamed of their slander. 
For it is better that if it is God's will to suffer for doing good than for doing evil. For Christ also suffered once for sins, the, the sins for the unrighteous, righteousness for the unrighteousness, I'm sorry, to begin to bring you God. He was put to death in the body, but made alive in the spirit. After being made alive, he went and made proclamation to the imprisoned spirits, to those who were disobedient long ago when God waited patiently in the days of Noah while the ark was being built. In it, only a few people, eight in all, were saved through water. And this water symbolizes the baptism that now saves you also. Not the removal of dirt from the body, but the pledge of a clear conscience toward God. It saves you by the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at God's right hand with angels, authorities, and powers in submission to him. The word of the Lord. Thanks, John. John 14, 15 through 21. If you love me, keep my commands. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever. The Spirit of Truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he lives with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Before long, the world will not see me anymore, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day you will realize that I am in the Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. Whoever has, my, whoever has my commands and keeps them is the one who loves me. The one who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I too will love them and show myself to them. This is the Gospel of the Lord. I too will remove my mask as I'm not over the top of the elements or, or anything like that. I, uh, I want to point something out though. You notice I changed our setting. Our reading this morning tells us that Jesus is at the right hand of God. Many times on our altars we, we look at, that's the right, no. Jesus is on the throne looking at us. He is on the right hand of God. That's why we moved our Christ candle to the right hand of the altar. It's just one of those little things we, we overlook sometimes in churches. That when I was reading the readings this week, God put on my heart, ah, let's get something square. I am looking on you. It's my right hand. It's not you looking to me. So anyway, that's why we're going to be the opposite way. I uh, I love our, our readings this morning, all of them. I mean, you listen to Paul telling the, the brilliant minds of that time, this is what it is. Come on. This is who we are. This is God. I can always add in there, get over yourselves. This is God. I guarantee he had some weird books that day when he was preaching that, but it's okay. This morning we're talking about the Holy Spirit. You know, I was known as the Holy Ghost when I grew up. I mean, I guess someone decided ghost didn't sound right. I looked up the translations in Latin and Hebrew and etc. And everyone has a different word for spirit and ghost. But the Holy Ghost in, has its own, its own translation. It's sancti. That is the Holy Ghost. That's why we're sanctified through the Spirit. Now, as I was researching that, and it's just it's all good stuff. If you're really, really trying to dig deep into that stuff. I mean, I like it, but I, then again, I don't. See the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, the Counselor of Jesus. It's pretty simple. You think about it, what Jesus told us. We as humans love to dig deeper and make it bigger. 
But if we read our scripture, Jesus tells us he's sending us someone to guide us and keep us. Someone that if we learn to listen to, will direct our thoughts to a better place. <coughs> He'll keep us strong when our sinful nature has us looking in the wrong direction. Do we understand it totally? Can we understand it totally? You know, honestly, the pastor, I don't think we're supposed to. That's one of God's that's one of God's mysteries that we that we just love. See, that's the point of faith. To believe in things we cannot see or understand. Things that we don't we don't grasp by our own intelligence, our own intuition. That's why God is God and, and we're human. I mean, we have an idea of what it all means. Jesus tells us about the scripture and what it all means. But to truly know and understand the spirit of God is right here in this room. He's right here in our hearts. I mean, think about it. He's here. He's all around us. Or if Jesus puts it in verse 20, on that day you will realize that I am in, the, in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. See, that's part of faith, too. See, first, we have to understand on that day, as Jesus puts it. And as I was preparing this, it, it dawned on me. You know what day that is? You know what day that is that we realize who Jesus is? That's, uh, as I said earlier, the day we get over ourselves and our own belief and how big we are. Like the people in our readings had all those statues, but the one that they really needed to know was an unknown God. The day that we believe that Jesus Christ is real, the day that we truly believe in Jesus' words, now get this, the Bible says is the day we're born again. Ta-da! How cool is that? Jesus tells us if we believe in him, he'll be with us. He'll be in us. And the Father will be in us too. That's God. And because Jesus and God are one, we'll be one with them if we believe. That's that day we were born again when we believe. As I said, God is right here. God is right with us. We sometimes look past the fact that he is experiencing everything we experience. We can't change that. No matter how we deny the truth, no matter how we pretend that he doesn't know what we're doing, God, to watch, I'm, I'm going to do this. See, it doesn't change. As I hear people say, I don't believe in God. Well, guess what? If you believe in Jesus or not, that part doesn't change. He's always here trying to help us. He's always here trying to guide us. And I do say trying because, you know, our sinful nature does lead us astray. As our readings a couple weeks ago, remember, he is our shepherd. And not only did he say he would lay his life down for his sheep, he literally went to the cross to prove it. I mean, what more can we ask for? See, then he was resurrected by his Father, our Father in heaven. 
And this is the part I think people don't understand. It wasn't for his own sake. Jesus did nothing that he did for himself. The more a guy, the more person thinks about that, it's like, oh my, oh my God. Now think about it. He was the Son of God. He didn't have to go through anything. Any of the pain he went through. But he did it for us. He did it so we could know the power of believing in his words. He did it so we could see the power of our Father in heaven. That's something in our scripture that we have to, we have to remember. Jesus is constantly reminding us he never did anything for his own glory. He did it for the glory of the Father in heaven. And everything he did for the Father was for us. As I said, if Jesus wanted his own glory, he would have wiped all those that hurt him off the map. I mean, I mean, think about it. With one breath, he could have stopped them all. The miracles he performed, do you think stopping those evil people would have been hard? No, he could have showed them his power in ways that we can't understand if it was for his own glory. But his mission here on earth was to show us the power of the Father. His only reason for coming as a human being was to show us that God loves us so much. He loves us for who we are so much that he'd send his son to guide us and teach us. I mean, we're his creation. His sinful, broken down creatures that stand up to sin in our eyeballs, the sin we know that was tearing us apart, yet we say, I don't need your help, God, I've got this. you got to admit, it's who we are. So today we're looking at the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost. It's kind of fun to say that, you know that? The Holy Ghost. Brings back memories of my confirmation years with Pastor Walter E. Buss. I don't know, he was a man that scared me half to death sometimes. <laughs> Little black tie, white shirt. But as I look back, he was a man that preached a faith that was so simple and pure that there was no questioning what he said. As I grow, I look back and it was the kind of faith that that the Holy Spirit was truly guiding. Everything he said, everything he did was the Holy Spirit guiding. As I was writing this, a strange thought came into my head. If all the people that claim to see ghosts in real life are truly seeing something, do you know them are truly unholy ghosts? I mean, if they supposedly really see spirits of the dead, it's just another thing Satan has conjured up to make us scared, to make us mixed up, to make us think that a spirit is something that we should be scared of, when the spirit is actually something that is guidance. See, so the devil does that. He loves to take our eyes off Jesus. He loves to make us weird things and try to take our eyes off what faith really is. See, I came to that conclusion by, well, the counseling of the Holy Spirit, which is on my heart as I write all the time. And the thought continued. Why would we be scared of any so-called ghosts? The quote, the song, the, the famous movie line, I ain't afraid of no ghost. I mean, yeah. 
Why would I be? Why would anybody be scared? Who knows their faith? See, we have the Holy Spirit living in us. The counsel that God has given us. So how can we worry? As Paul writes in Romans 8, 37 through 39, No, in all these things that we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation, will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. There are those words from Paul again. And tell me that isn't spirit-led, because he was a cruel man before he found out who Jesus was. Before he was born again and believed Jesus' words. Nothing can separate us from the love of God. Take that back. Nothing but our own pride and stupidity. It's just that simple. No, we must always go back to the seven words Jesus told his followers from John 14 this morning. If you love me, keep my commands. And then you will understand, verses 16 and 17a. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever. The Spirit of Truth. Right there. If you love me. That two-letter word, if. It puts it on our shoulders. And as I've said a million times, we have the ability to ignore, ignore Christ. We have the ability to ignore faith. We have the ability to downplay it all we want. We have the ability to be one of those in the world that doesn't know him. Now remember, Jesus said that. Jesus tells it just like it is in the second part of verse 17. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he lives with you and will be with you. As I stand up here, all I can do is preach the fact that he is in you and he's in me. It's up to us to accept it. It's up to us to be born again. And wow, once it happens, you're going to look back and say, why did I stand there in that muller and muck and fight this? No, I, I thank God for your faith. I know you people. I thank God for your willingness and humbleness to believe. I truly thank God. I really, I truly thank Him for you. And as we, as we put this out into the world where people aren't coming to God's house voluntarily, where they don't know if they want to, for the people that don't know for sure, in the world that don't know Him, for anyone that doesn't understand how the Holy Spirit works. I ask you to say, say a special prayer. Just say a prayer of the Spirit to ask Him to find that spot in your heart that He can open it up. See, a lot of people keep their hearts locked, but the Spirit has the key. God has never left you. He's never forsaken you. For a lot of people, he's just out of sight, out of mind. I just pray that we all just open our minds to let our hearts receive Jesus. It's truly that simple. Amen. Amen. Oh, let us pray. Oh, dear Heavenly Father, you knew who we would be, would be. You knew that we would need the Spirit in us.
to break us free from our sin. You knew that it would take the Holy Spirit to help us be born again. Oh, Lord, but being born again truly shows us where we were. Help us to find you. Help us to believe in your son's words. Help Jesus Christ. Just help us to understand what you gave. Come into us and guide us. We just pray this all in your holy name. Amen. We'll continue with our hymn today. Please rise to your right. Let us share the, the words of our faith that, that we truly believe in the words of the Apostles' Creed. Please join me. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please let us pray. Oh dear Heavenly Father, you are the giver of all good things. You gave us life. You gave us this earth. You gave us numerous starts. You gave us your son. Lord, you are the giver of all good things. Dear Heavenly Father, help us to step back and look and see and realize what you do. Lord, continue to keep us under your watch. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Dear Jesus, you came. You taught. You showed. You gave your life for us. And when you see that even that wasn't going to be enough, you said, I'll send my spirit because I'm not giving up. Oh, dear Jesus, thank you for giving us all your good things. Thank you for, for being our Lord and Savior. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Amen. Oh, dear Holy Spirit, the part of the triune God that we celebrate today. Thank you for being in our hearts. Thank you for being around us. Thank you for, for connecting us with our God. Thank you for being that part of us that we can't throw away. Uh, Holy Spirit, continue to guide us and keep us, continue to, to stay with us. Uh, Holy Spirit, we, we cannot go on without you. So please, please just keep guiding. Lord, in your mercy. Oh God, we just, we just hold everything up to you. You know our fears, you know our thoughts. You know everything we feel. And we just open our hearts today and give it all to you. And we wait for your guidance and your plan. No matter how hard it is to wait, we know you do have a plan. Because we'll be with you forever if we continue to listen to your plan. Oh Lord, we just put all those that we know that have troubles at your feet. I ask you to I ask you to be with them. And we just pray this all in your your son's name. Amen. Amen. We don't do a traditional offering, but I felt that we we really should be doing an offertory prayer. Because whether we pass the plate here or if you put it in out there. It's still God. It's still His, and it's still an offering to Him. So please, 
join with me in the offertory prayer. Merciful Father, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. to the Lord our God. It is indeed right and salutary that we should in all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord our Father, almighty, everlasting God. But chiefly we are bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of our Lord. For he is the true Passover lamb who gave himself to take away our sin, who by his death and has destroyed death, and by his rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all creatures, and with all angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join in our unending hymn. same night he took the cup and after he drank he gave thanks he gave it to his disciples and said take and drink this is the new covenant in my blood shed for you for the forgiveness of sins do this as often as you drink it and remember it to me in that same spirit of giving he gave us a prayer that is perfect to say please join me in our Lord's prayer our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And leave us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. The meal is set. Please come as you are, are able to come as you feel, feel safe to do. Enjoy the Lord's Lord's Supper. Please come. Uh, receive the, the blessing of the Lord. May this body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, keep us steadfast in the faith until he returns again in glory. Live your lives in his peace. In the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We give you thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this, the healing power of this gift of life. And we pray you would strengthen us through this gift in faith toward you, and in fervent love toward one another. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen.
It was a little different, but it worked. It's still the Lord's Supper. I hope it refreshed you, and I hope it strengthens your faith and helps you understand who, who he is and that he is truly in us. Uh, receive the benediction of our Lord. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance on you and give you his peace. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We'll continue with our closing. Uh, no matter what happens, remember the Lord's with us. He's watching. He feels us. He knows us. Just go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Amen.